Dungeons and Dragons is more popular than ever before, and we are very proud to produce the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments range, the official line of paints for D&D. I'm Adam from the Army Painter, and today I'm going to show all of you dungeon crawlers out there how to produce your very own dungeon tile setup. You can make your own dungeon tile from scratch, but many manufacturers produce affordable pre-cut MDF tiles like the one we'll be using from TNT Combat. The paints that you're going to need for this tutorial are Color Primer Matte Black, Color Primer Uniform Gray, and from the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments range, Orc Skin, Silver Dragon, Skeleton Bone, and Putrid Slime. You'll also require some basic materials from our Battlefields range, and I'm gonna call them out as we proceed throughout this tutorial, but first, Grab yourself some Battlefields Basing Glue, and let's get started. Using the Battlefields Basing Glue, we're just going to apply this on all of the edges that we want to assemble this dungeon tile together. Simply apply the glue to the edge and fit the pieces together that you want to assemble, and hold it until it dries about 30 seconds to a minute, if not faster. I'm going to be applying some more of the Battlefields Basing Glue to some interesting areas, and in these areas, I'm going to sprinkle in at first some Battlefields rocks from our Battlefields basing range. These are larger pre-colored rocks, but we are gonna be painting over these in the future and that's why we're applying them in this step. Once the Battlefields rocks have had time to dry, I'm going to be applying a little bit more of our Battlefields basing glue into some areas of interest on this dungeon tile, like some cracks and crevices on the tile and around the areas where we've previously applied the Battlefields rocks. This is just going to add a nice sandy, light rocky texture to the base, and we're gonna pull out these details in the later stages. Once your dungeon tile is completely assembled, you're going to wanna to take it outside to a well-ventilated area to apply a primer coat. We're gonna start by applying matte black color primer across the entirety of the dungeon tile. We're spraying this dungeon tile in smooth, even passes, and we'll go back and apply a second coat if we missed any areas. Next, we're going to apply something that I like to call a Zenithal highlight. You've probably heard a lot about this if you've watched other tutorials on the internet. A Zenithal highlight is essentially an over-the-top highlight, the way that the light would strike down on the subject matter. And for this, we're gonna be using Color Primer Uniform Gray. We're just going to apply a very light dusting of this primer spray across the top, making sure to pull out some of the raised areas on this dungeon tile. When you're painting terrain or large vehicles like this dungeon tile setup, I highly recommend a good sized dry brush like our Wargamer Vehicle and Terrain Dry Brush. Using that large vehicle and terrain dry brush from our Wargamer's range, we're gonna load up the bristles with just a little bit of this orc skin and we're gonna flick off the excess onto a piece of paper towel. We want as little of the paint remaining on this brush as possible. Then we're going to simply flick the brush and the bristles across the raised areas of our dungeon tile, picking out the most raised areas and the details quite simply as you can see here. Now it's important not to load up the brush with too much paint in this step. You can always add more paint and more dry brush layers later, it's much more difficult to take that paint away. Next, we're gonna be using Skeleton Bone, and much in the same fashion, we're going to be applying this across the most raised areas, focusing mostly on the corners and the edges to really pull out the detail of this model. Finally, Using Silver Dragon, we're going to apply this in just some areas of interest. Now, the reason I like applying a metal dry brush over top of a stone feature is that it gives it the appearance that it's almost like a granite, like the rocks have chipped away and you can see some of the flecks of the metal inside the stone in there. Very simply, we're just going to flick the Silver Dragon across the areas of the model that we see fit. Next, we're gonna go back and grab our Battlefields basing glue, and we're gonna apply this in areas that we wanna have some grass features, almost like there's mossy grass growing through this dungeon tile. Once we've applied the glue, we're going to take some of our step grass. This is a great, dark, deep, almost moldy green color grass tone, and we're gonna apply this flock into the areas that we've brushed on our Battlefields basing glue. Simply sprinkle the step grass on, and then shake off the excess into the container. 
Once that's had time to dry, we're going to add some gross and gory slime effects using putrid slime. Now, we're gonna treat this almost like a wash, and we're gonna find some of the areas on the model that we think are interesting. And we're just gonna load up our brush with the putrid slime and paint it into the recesses. You can apply this as much or as little as you want to. I imagine that there's some really creepy paranormal activity happening in this dungeon setup. So I'm going to go ahead and add a big pool of the putrid slime right here. Putrid slime is a very glossy paint and gives a realistic, if you can call it that, slime effect. Our Battlefield's Tufts are a great and quick way to add realistic effects to your basing and terrain projects. Using Deadlin and Frozen Tufts, I'm just going to apply these sporadically, using again our Battlefield's basing glue to the areas of the model that I see fit. And just like that, we are finished with our dungeon tile. Go ahead and grab your favorite characters and your D20, and it's time to get started gaming. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up that dungeon tile setup from TT Combat. You can find all of the products used in today's tutorial on our website at www.thearmypainter.com, from your friendly local game store, or your favorite online retailer like Amazon. Remember the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with a few simple techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.